excuse us. No, pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Just move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. Okay, so, we got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. This shit better be good. Let's hope so. Shh. The movie's starting. I am Dustin Goes to Hollywood. I'm Mally Moore. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest, or in this case, most what the fuckish endings. Holy yeah. shit. Um <laughs> Man, the nineties were weird. The nineties were wild. Um so if you're new to the show, first of all, thank you for finding us and giving us a chance. What we like to do is uh watch movies. Similar to the movie we're covering today, that don't end in your typical Hollywood fashion, where there's a neat little bow on the end of things, uh, there's no happily ever after, and in this case, man, it's both cr- insane, crazy, depressing, and out there. And this just, is a it's, wild ending. It's super '90s. Like, do you remember like back in like the it was like the '90s, early 2000s, maybe when just dead prostitute was just like a A (laughs) punchline yes like god (laughs) we this movie could not be made today i don't think yeah well this is this movie was like it's it's like the proto hangover like there's no way Mm -hmm. this didn't Mm -hmm. influence todd phillips series especially hangover especially hangover 2 because that's where that shit got dark for sure and i'm gonna compare this movie to hangover part 2 probably a few more times during the process of this episode <laughs> okay um well we have a guest joining us this week Mally. um this this guest reached out to me on instagram and suggested this we cover this movie on the show uh so le- please let me introduce sam weisberg thank you so much thanks for having me so sam you reached out to me on instagram and said um that you you had a movie that you think would be perfect for our show you suggested this one um, which at the time I had never even heard of, and I'm guessing Mally, you probably never had heard of it either. I'd never heard anything about. I didn't know what it was until I clicked play earlier same, today. Same. So I had no idea what to expect. Um, but you, yeah, you reached out and said you, we should cover this episode on the show. Um, uh, and if I'm remembering correctly, you said that no other podcast that you had listened to had really given this movie like the the real coverage it, it deserves is that right yes i, I heard one podcast where uh, i think it's a husband and wife and the premise is that the husband is a film nerd and the wife totally isn't and uh mm-hmm. he like tortures her and makes her watch these these movies um <laughs> but i i felt like the both their reactions to it were kind of um yeah kind of on the on the timid side they didn't get really get into um they were talking very broadly about it they didn't, okay so <laughs> so they weren't really getting into the specifics of it all no nah. <laughs> okay it, well, m- most most of it was just her going like i hate you for making me watch this and <laughs> <laughs> well that's funny that's uh, how i kind of feel about dustin every time he <laughs> makes me watch a movie <laughs> um hopefully we we don't disappoint you then because i i know i have a lot of notes i know mally um it was very oh, re- oh, reactive. Guys, Dustin, again, this is like one of those rare episodes where I took notes. Like, okay. I came prepared, <laughs> and I just, I'm, all right. For, all right, hang on. First things first, mm-hmm. the lounge music is annoying as fuck, and is one of the things about this movie that pisses me off the most. Adding lounge music to a fucked up dark scene does not make it funny. Yeah, the soundtrack in this movie is wild. Like the the score and everything, it's it's just such a bizarre movie. Um, so Mal, you you just finished watching this today? I'm assuming right before we started. Uh, twenty minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so you're real fresh on on your feelings for it. I actually watched this for the first time about hmm, I want to say maybe a month from a month ago from today when we're recording. And yeah, I remember you. T- I remember you texting me about it, like, "Hey, dude, have you watched this yet?" And wh- I don't know why you asked me. You know for a fact I wait you until watch the day until, of. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't watch these <laughs> ahead of time. I do everything absolutely last minute. Mm-hmm, my mm-hmm. excuse is, you know, my reasoning is that, well, hey, now it's fresh in my memory. 
Um, yeah. But it's kind of good because you've had a month to sit on this movie. Um, Sam yeah. obviously had some time to like he, he recommended this movie. He's seen it, <laughs> um, and I, I'm coming in just fresh as hell. Like, so we got a good a good mixture here. We got like fresh brand new eyes on it someone who's had a month to really digest it and sam how many times have you seen this movie um i think i think like three and a half and uh wow that's wild to me because just you just oof. just couldn't make it through that fourth time huh <laughs> yeah well so so what happened was i saw it um uh not long after it came out my my friend had like had it on pay-per-view um, and I think, mm -hmm. a, I think a lot about this nice. movie is, is when you watch it, not even necessarily the time of your life that you watch it in, but the time of day. So mm -hmm. I was like 19. I was a good age for it, but I, I watched it bright and early in the morning, which is when you just want like oh, a God. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> such a bad idea. And, uh, <laughs> I was just in a terrible funk for like the whole rest of the day and, yeah, I imagine. <laughs> I mean, that's I really, pretty much yeah. what I did. Like, I woke up, was like, oh, shit, I have to watch a movie. <laughs> and so, like, got up and, like, rented it because it wasn't, like, I had to rent this motherfucker. Yeah, it's um, hard to find. Like, push play. I was like, all right, um, let me, all right, hang on. I got coffee. Okay, cool. Play. <laughs> and I was woken up about... 20 30 minutes into this movie very quickly yeah <laughs> yeah it, it, when it when it hits that uh inciting incident it goes yeah. um well it's kind like... of funny like most of my initial notes mm -hmm. are like kind of good like like my first note is like dude this cast is stacked it's a pretty good yeah. cast like we got daniel fucking stern son mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. jeremy piven christian slater Layla stern my favorite part of this movie Honestly. Oh yeah. Uh, what's his name? Leyland Orser, who mm -hmm. he will always creep me out because I always just see him as his character from the Bone Collector. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. like and he's, he's in seven. Dude, oh, he's in what? He's in seven. He's uh. I think, oh, that's right. Yeah, he's, he's the dude with the uh, razor blade. Uh, mm, uh, previous episode uh, sex seven. toy. Yeah. yeah. Oh god, yeah. that is him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Damn. <laughs> So, um, why don't we get into? Uh, oh yeah, so then, so then, so I just wanted, I just sorry, I just want to say real quick. So yeah, li like a lot of things in life that have kind of startled me the first time I see them, you know, there's like an obsession that takes hold when something really disturbs you, and then eventually mm -hmm. I, I start liking them and and their intended effects. So like Metallica's Enter Sandman video, it scared the shit out of me as a kid, and then I like <laughs> became a huge yeah. fan of the bands. And uh, this was one of those films that I, I kind of gradually got the humor of. But then I watched it at my bachelor party, which was a terrible idea. Oh, my God. Yeah. That oh, was, my God. That, <laughs> that, was, <laughs> that was the dumbest idea. I was like, oh, wow. all, all my friends are here. Ooh. They haven't seen it. It's going to be hilarious. And it's all about that kind of anxiety. It's all about, you know, wedding oh, wedding oh. anxiety. And it's all about the anxiety of having murdered a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh. And I was like, I left in the middle of it. I was like, I'm fucking flipping out. <laughs> so you made them sit there. Yeah, like I really seen indulged it. I'd in seen the movie. It. I'd seen it three times and I still couldn't take it. Wow. Yeah. So that's the half time. Yeah. You said you saw it three and a half. So the half was at your bachelor party. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Bold. Um, very yeah, it's bold. Very bold. <laughs> well, why don't we. Um, Discuss some details surrounding the film Very Bad Things, which I think is the first time we've actually said the title on this episode. <laughs> so the year is 1998. Director, who also we haven't really mentioned yet, Peter Berg, um, who's, you know, he's dipped his toes in the acting world and his toes in the directing world. Um, the film stars Jeremy Piven, Daniel Stern, Cameron Diaz, John Favreau. Uh, Gene Triplehorn and Christian Slater. Um, but, 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 the movie had a budget of $30 million and only managed to gross $10 million worldwide. I wonder uh, and, why. <laughs> <laughs> and currently sits at a 41% on Rotten Tomatoes. Interesting. Now, see, this being a Peter Berg movie, mm -hmm. I want to see Peter Berg remake this movie nowadays, shot mm. for shot, but mm -hmm. but Mark Wahlberg plays 
every role. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. Dude, that, that would be like, um, who's the guy that did funny games that we did on the show? He he made um, his. Oh, uh, yeah. I can't remember his Mike, name. but Michael yeah, Hannigan. He did the original and then the, the remake. Then, yeah. I, I actually would like to see a remake of this movie with the same cast. I think that would be pretty funny. Well, Mark. it's funny. There's a movie that, like, this movie reminded me of another fucked up Jeremy Piven movie about a group of guys who all are into some dark shit together. Have you ever seen... Entourage the movie? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, damn it. Um, what is it? I Melt With You? Yes. Mm-mm. Yes. I haven't seen that. The, the reunion, I, right? I, yeah, where they make that pact and... Ooh, boy, do they Haven't follow through it. with it. Um, I think it's on it's on our list somewhere. I think like when like years ago when when we first started the show, I think that was like one of the first movies I put down. I was like, oh, we gotta talk about this, and then we just have never I, have done it. Never have done it. <laughs> um But yeah, it's Jamie Piven takes some interesting roles on occasion. Yeah, he does. Um all right. Well, before we get into the movie as a whole, why don't we watch the trailer? um Matt, have you seen this trailer yet no okay i didn't i didn't think so i just wanted to make sure it's wild um but let's let's get into it and this will help if uh other people who are listening to this episode haven't seen this movie this will yeah. i i, I want to see how they tried to market this film <laughs> uh very poorly i'll say that <laughs> but let's uh let's watch the trailer here the bride. You have to pick up the cake. Don't we have somebody to do that? Yeah, you. The that brood. fucking what lounge music. The yep. Checks. The best man. Those titles. Five guys, nine hundred bucks. The strippers here. Excellent. This is Tina. The problem. Not to mention the whoosh <laughs> sound effects. Oh, always options. You left a dead prostitute in the desert. It's a hundred and five pound problem. Can't do this. We've already done this. And that worked. It has worked. It is working. What have we done? What have we done? What did you do? It also feels like this trailer is on fast forward. I just turn your little <laughs> pathetic ass in. I am not canceling this. I don't want you to. I want to know what happened in Vegas. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened in Vegas. Some very good people. Ah! Get him, take out my minivan. Oh, are doing some very bad things. We were very, very bad. Here comes the Wahoo. While you're at it, you know, just get rid of that dog. You want me to kill the dog? Christian Slater. This is a situation that defies judgment. Cameron Diaz. This is my day. Very John Favreau is an even top build. At the end of that, <laughs> and I would say he's the protagonist of the movie. Uh, can I just say they they ruined at least like four visual jokes there? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. They <laughs> they, they spoke quite trailers. a bit of that. Yeah. But I feel like it's the trailer is so fast that you it nothing it sits with me like it's so quick. They don't give it any time to breathe. I mean, this trailer is barely over a minute. Yeah, when Holy I when shit. I first when I first saw it, I thought this is like a goofy black comedy, and uh, and then yeah. my, then I, I think my parents saw it. I don't know why. Oh, they're fans of Christian Slater, <laughs> and they <laughs> they saw it with no warning, and they were like, "It's absolutely the worst." And of course, that gave me like the you know the train wreck mentality. Like I have to see this, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't see it in the theaters. <sighs> okay. Well, very bad things. Where do we want to start? Sam, I I'm feel gonna... like... Mally, I'm going to hold you back for a sec. All Sam right. is the one who suggested we All do this right, movie. All right, let's go. So, Sam, let's where do you want to start? It. Uh, just, like my, just like my view, uh, my uh, reaction. Just, just anyway, if there's any specific thing you want to talk about first, we'll 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 jump in there. Okay. Um, so, I, I guess broadly speaking, even though this movie is just loaded with... Murder, you know, murder and mayhem and mutilation. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I mean, I kind of think, uh, I think it's a very, it's a very cruel movie. And I think what's oh my god, yeah. yeah, what's cruelest about it, <laughs> what's cruelest about it is the emotional cruelty and also the the fact that it's a comedy. If it was just a thriller, I don't, it wouldn't have any mm -hmm. of the shot, the same shock value. But but like well, like Mally said about the music, you know, there's cues that you're supposed to laugh at this stuff and, mm -hmm. um. There are definitely a few things that I, on even on repeated viewings, I just I never find funny. It's like, wow, this is so. There's yeah, there's one moment that got a genuine laugh out loud moment for me, Which... and I, I'm not. I don't think I'm supposed to laugh at it, <laughs> but it's 
It's when Daniel Stern explodes by getting hit by that car. <laughs> oh, it's that ah. scene. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, that's that's going to be the moment of this movie that sticks out the most for me cuz that dummy when he gets hit by the car. <laughs> holy shit. What do you mean? That I, was, I, that was I, really that was really Daniel Stern. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Recipe <laughs> Daniel Stern. <laughs> no, that that I sat up in my chair and was like, holy shit. <laughs> and then the fact that he somehow survived that. Really. <laughs> yeah. See, really. That, that, that didn't, sh- the fact that he survives that didn't shock me as much as that Jeremy Piven just doesn't spend a night in jail. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. What? I, like, I, I... Yeah, especially because like, like the, their excuses to the police are so bad. They're so lame. They're well, so they're, they're like, like they're like the worst oh, police work. They're like it was an accident. I'm like I don't yeah. if it was an I don't care if it was an accident. You can say it was an accident, but he still committed vehicular manslaughter. It wasn't even or an accident when he got up to at least what like 40, 50 miles an hour yeah. in a straight line. <laughs> oh man, um. Like that was that's the moment where I was like I like I was like he's really like he started delving into his Ari Gold character early right yes. there. Yeah, that I was definitely a pure felt Ari Gold Ari moment. Gold. Yeah. Um I mean right off the ahead. bat though. Right off yeah. the bat like with that van ride on their way to Vegas. Mhm. That moment I was like I dislike every single <laughs> one of these characters. Yeah. yeah, the the camaraderie they try to to inject before the murder happens like, like they're they're all kind of dicks <laughs> mm-hmm. like daniel but, stern is the is the one i feel for the most in this movie besides cameron diaz who, yeah holy crap and which like i'm not like i didn't like just because like all the characters are dicks like again like the first hangover movie like i like the first hangover movie all mm-hmm. those characters are dicks as well but i was like but yeah hey, i'm gonna have some fun so going mm-hmm. into this movie like i was expecting you know it's 98 like it's swingers had come out already so i'm i'm spec i'm expecting a little bit of that brat pack or or, sorry Mm -hmm. frat it was the frat pack that was their Mm -hmm. crew Mm -hmm. so i was expecting you know maybe like a fun little you know dark comedy from the frat pack and uh uh woo that's yeah well yeah not exactly where they went piven and favreau were old buddies they were actually in rudy together (laughs) yeah that's right Uh, Mm -hmm. And then they could have brought Vince Vaughn into it, and then Cusack and Piven were friends, so that 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 could have been an, that would have been like a real reunion movie. Yeah, it's like oh, that would have really... been awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I don't really find that these guys would all be friends, really. Yeah, like there it, it doesn't they don't sell me on the the friendship amongst all of these characters, which I mean when we get to that montage in the hotel room like for real it really solidifies that none of these characters are good people and therefore i find it hard like even john favreau like i find it hard to feel for him throughout this entire movie because i'm like yeah. dude just well, I, don't, I mean there's no dude, that that montage gets they get they cut loose mm-hmm. and <laughs> whew, they i mean they are they're like we're going to vegas we're going to fucking Vegas. Yeah. Well, not even that, too. They're all such losers that they're all in like khakis and polos yeah. <laughs> like, going to Vegas. It's just, it's so 90s, dude. And I mean, creepy enough, too, to have five dudes and one stripper in a hotel room. Like, right. it, yeah, dude, like, it's okay. The, the lap dance scene is super weird because of how into the lap dance everyone is. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. they're re- like, at that, there's one point. Jeremy Piven is clearly masturbating, mm-hmm. watching, <laughs> watching John Favreau get a lap dance. Well, like too, if because we had never seen this movie, when it got to that scene, I was like, "What the fuck movie am I watching? Like, what, what is supposed to happen in this movie?" Because obviously, I, I didn't watch the trailer going in. I didn't know what was about to happen. So, like, I'm watching this, and I'm just like. I don't. Is this supposed to be just a comedy, like a comedy comedy, and then there's just straight up, like the the quick montage too of like them all partying and doing coke, intercut with Jeremy Piven's 
just horrific and horrible to watch sex scene with this trip. Which I will say, he there is one like right at the beginning, um, uh, when she, like when they're having the whole back and forth of like, oh, like five hundred dollars straight sex, nothing kinky, and he mm-hmm. says, "I'm not going to use anything as a hand puppet or anything." Oh, <laughs> that line! I, I, I like I stopped the movie and I was like, "Hold on." Well, and two during. During that montage, it it took it took me a sec to even realize that the stripper was dead, just because of how poorly that montage is edited. Like it didn't really cue you in to what was happening until she's literally bleeding on the floor. Yeah, like, I well, didn't put it together that she had smacked her head against the. I, I think the and then the hook. it just just leaves her hanging there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think the way it's what? the way it's edited, um, it's edited so fast and so clumsy, kind of. Yeah. I think it's supposed to mirror just sort of they're fucked up out of their minds. On oh no, for and, sure, and, for sure. And it's... when you're and when you're fucked up, you're, you're clumsy. You forget how strong you are. So that's mm-hmm. the one way that I can buy. Like a friend of mine was like, "That wouldn't kill her. Like that. That's not that. that, that I don't that, know. That, that, that wouldn't go through her skull." And I was like, "Well, I think." Just given there's really loud music playing, he's out of his mind. There's he can't, he might not be able to mm-hmm. hear her initial screams. Like, and he's going really hard and forgets how strong he is. Um, yeah. And no, they oh, sold yeah, me. No, I I bought they, that one hundred percent. Yeah. 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 No, they sold me. Um, <laughs> now that being said, they really ramp up um, from manslaughter to mm-hmm. homicide. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they turn to. Very quickly. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I, I feel worse for the security guard. Me too. Oh okay. God. And then like, <laughs> so he comes in and like, he sees like the dead girl and then like, so Boyd like stabs him and then like, they lock him in the bathroom and like, they're all like trying to keep him in there. And then Boyd just like says, he's like, it's a, it's fine. He'll bleed out. He'll bleed out. I'm like, okay, Boyd has definitely done this before. Like, oh no. No. Yeah. <laughs> like what the fuck? Like I thought. I thought that, and then I thought Jeremy Pivot has definitely done this before too in his real life. He is yeah, definitely. I, I was like, they've, they've raw dogged a Vegas stripper and then murdered her <laughs> and had to bury it. I was like, yeah. they've like they're like they're handling this way too well to have oh, not done this before. No, no, no. They they go to the bury her in the desert option so quickly. But I mean, it, the, the hooker well, is, is even, one thing. Oh, hang on, before they get to the desert. Again, they jump from manslaughter to homicide, and like, mm-hmm. all right, well, we gotta dismember them. It's like, what? Yeah. Hold on, what? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, why? I, I, like, I, I, why I think... is that the first idea you come up with? <laughs> what think, the fuck? I think what's so brilliant about that about that whole scene, though, of the the aftermath, is that they have this very short window of time between the realization that the stripper's dead and the security guard coming in. So they're mm-hmm. still arguing about. They're, they're slowly realizing that their one of their best friends is a fucking maniac, which has got to be terrible. Yeah. Just, just imagine that you're, <laughs> you're with a friend well, that you think is maybe a little crass, but not like capable of this, and he's he starts mm-hmm. throwing. He's completely unfazed by a dead girl and starts throwing out these these ideas, and they're still arguing. Yeah. They they still all want to call the police, which at that point, I I really think that. Um, Jeremy Piven w- would be the only one that got in trouble, and they'd be doing. Yeah. They'd be doing. Probably would get a manslaughter charge, but but then but yeah. then it just it when the when the security guard comes in and Slater just takes mm-hmm. such quick option, that's kind of like when it would it would then obviously they're all going down. So yeah, oh, yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, Daniel Stern is the only one with a conscience because he's like, we sh- we call the police. Of course, we call the police, and I'm yeah, I'm like, yeah, I I think at that point. Yes, Jeremy Piven probably get a manslaughter charge, maybe even get it dismissed, like if he has a good enough lawyer, as like, oh, it was an accident, you know. I mean, there's enough coke and drugs and everything in that room to really send them all away. (laughs) But, you know, it's Vegas. I feel like it's you, you, you'd have a a good enough story. And if you had a good enough lawyer, that you'd get a slap on the wrist, maybe some community service, a fine, maybe even like probation. But, yeah, yeah, that when they that's if you call the police like right then. Um but the thing the thing about the when they kill the 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 hotel security guy, it's so dumb because Christian Slater is like, well, we got to get him out of here. And I'm like, dude, he that guy works for the hotel. They're yeah. going to know he's missing. 
Yeah. Like he's on, he's working a shift and they're going to see on cameras that he went up to that room and never came out. Right. Like it's, it's yeah. so I mean, clearly, in, and that in, doesn't. In Boyd's defense, like this was what, nine, this movie came out in 98. Like, mm-hmm. Committing murder and hiding a body was a lot easier then. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, it would I'm gonna, be. I'm going to give that to him on that. Well, one. It, it would be easier to get away with if they weren't. They are shouting so loud the entire time. About, right. Right. <laughs> they, even the people next door to them have got to be like, oh, those guys murdered people because we can well, hear them clearly. <laughs> the, the, the guard the guard gets a call of about the noise, right? That's why, yeah. He, yeah. So, why wouldn't the I, same people that called about the guard? Yeah, there's a yeah. lot. I, I mean, uh, I mean, the smartest thing they do, I would say, with this whole plan is at least they go to different stores to buy all of the items they need. They're not oh, smart enough. I didn't. They're, I they're didn't not catch smart that. enough to send in one person to get all the things. They all go in. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> Wow, I, I didn't know. I didn't it, catch that. The that's, movie got dark real quick. <laughs> yeah. That's a good catch. I totally thought they all went to the same Home Depot. <laughs> no, they, they, like during the montage they're like they're clearly in like going to different stores, but wow. which is smart in this instance, but when you all go in every yeah. time at two o'clock <laughs> in the morning, what how could you yeah, how could you're that buying possibly shovels and suitcases yeah. and bags? That, why, I, w- I feel like if I was a clerk at any of those stores, I would call the police. Like, there's no yeah. way these guys are buying chainsaws for a good reason. It- <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Also, what hardware stores open at 2 a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In Vegas, you, maybe there, there's like a, a whole deal, like a, like a hooker burying. <laughs> like, you know, like like the, cl- the, cl- the clerk at the 24-7 Home Depot is just like, ah, uh, dead hooker, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Apparently, you guys get the uh, special if you if you buy the buckets and the shovel together. <laughs> P- Peter Berg said in an interview he got the whole idea seeing packs of guys uh, like in Vegas that it, like he saw them like in a store uh, like buying things like this and it, and it, and also just around the casinos and it really freaks him out. Mm-hmm. Like what yeah. are they what are they up to? You know. <laughs> well, yeah, like again, I've never been to Vegas myself, Neither but have I. based and maybe I'm biased because my only really ideas of vegas are from movies mostly but i mean seems like a normal night in vegas for the most part (laughs) yeah yeah the (laughs) only weird thing is the dead security guard like the dead like the coke the crazy broken furniture the dead prostitute that all seemed normal (laughs) really the movie took it the movie didn't really take a turn for me personally until they kill until they killed the security guard i was like well that's not normal that's weird yeah, hmm. that's that's the scene I still I cannot laugh at. There's uh there's really only one, f- and I don't even I feel like that scene. There's only one part, even though it's a comedy. There's only one part that's even supposed to be funny, and that's when uh they think he's dead, and then he starts up again, and Christian Slater goes, "Die, you son of a bitch!" Yeah, but it's it's I mean, so that, horrible. <laughs> I can't. The yeah. security guard getting murdered is so brutal, man. Like yeah. there's so much blood. Yeah. There's so much blood in this movie. <laughs> And the only time they get a conscious is when they're burying them in the desert, and they're like, "Oh, we have to bury the limbs together," which I did think <laughs> yeah. was kind of a funny scene of them trying to figure out whose arm this is, whose leg this is. Yeah, but J- Jeremy Piven just said, "Like, oh, I got toes, I got toes." <laughs> <laughs> but again, but, that's Daniel Stern's character being like, "No, like, God, they're all mixed together. We need, like, we need to do this. We need to do this." And Boyd's just like, "What the fuck are you talking about, dude?" Mm-hmm. We've already dismembered. And again, I can't get over how fast they came up with dismemberment. Yeah. yeah. God. Well, I, I mean. Guess, uh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. His, I guess his, his Slater's initial idea is to, is to lower the corpses out the balcony, which is really yeah. funny. And they're like, what the fuck? I mean, I don't remember who says it, but when they're out there in the desert and they're burying people, someone says, I, I think they're talking about like turning themselves in and it might even be christian slater and he says two wrongs don't make a right i'm like dude you murdering the security guard was the second wrong (laughs) like you don't really get a chance to to come in here now and say what what the plan is i don't know (laughs) and then they put two large boulders over the gravesite as if those aren't giant x's on any 
detective's treasure map to find these two missing people. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. That it, whole it's thing, so uh, sloppy. Yeah, where Slater says no one knows she's here. I think even the stripper, they somebody would know that, that she had this private assignment. <laughs> yeah. And then whenever they do like make it to that gas station, none of them think, like before they get home, to buy new clothes or like wash themselves off because they show back up to John Favreau's house and they're all still covered in those dirty blood soaked clothes. That's true. I, I, I think that's the whole point is that these guys are all fucking morons, but yeah. Jesus, oh. it's, 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 it's such a sloppy, sloppy way of doing things. <laughs> um, and like, I just like, of course the moment it happens, you're just like, okay. I mean, Adam, uh, Daniel Stern's character is like, he's going to be the one to break. Like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. like literally like the first scene after one of the first scenes after they get back, um, besides the whole, um, Cameron Diaz helping fix their tuxes, which I found really weird. Um, it's like him just like fucking trying to buy like Whistlers or whatever. Yeah. I was going to say, what are, what are Whistlers? Are they like Twizzlers? I assume so. I don't actually know, but like, I, I'm in his defense. Like when his wife gets mad at him for snapping at the kids, I'm like, hold no. <laughs> he had every right to snap at those kids. They were kind of being very loud. Yeah, yeah. poor Daniel Stern with that that family. She's, like everyone she's, hates him. In that she's family. horrible. She's horrible. They're horrible. There's you're right. There's not a single yeah. likable person. <laughs> and I feel like the movie is trying to tell me that I need to feel for Cameron Diaz the most, but. And rightfully so, she has a right to be as freaked out as she is, considering what happens at the end of this movie. But, like, just freaking out about, like, the tiniest little things regarding this wedding. Like, it's one of the reasons I don't really care to go to weddings, because everyone is (laughs) always like, these things have to go absolutely perfect. And I'm like, man, the imperfections are what make the moment, like... The wedding okay, special, you, right? You, you you say you're supposed to feel bad for Cameron Diaz, but again, I'm jumping a little ahead here, but she mm-hmm. jumps on the fucking yeah. murder train yes. without a blink of <laughs> yeah. her fucking eye. I know. She's I like know. she's like, Oh, you guys did that? Um, okay, well, you need to kill your best friend. Yeah. Yep. Because my wedding has to be perfect. That's the yeah. whole her whole motivation is my wedding has to be um, perfect. Yeah, but I mean, okay. Before we get before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I do have just a small side note. I don't really understand rehearsal dinners. <laughs> yeah. Like it's just it's just like a pre wedding. Di- like do they like nothing's actually rehearsed, right? It's just like a pre wedding dinner. Yeah. I feel like it's just them to test out the food, right? <laughs> like to make sure it's up to everyone's liking. I think it's I a know. whole separate. I don't think it's an expensive thing you got to pay for, and yeah, I've never understood why they call it a rehearsal dinner. It's a cocktail yeah, party. Yeah, I feel like it's it, and it's one of those things like um, people that work at uh, hobby stores are like, you know, we have the exact same products for sale, but if, if one of them says for weddings, the price is marked up because people will pay for it thinking, oh, this is specifically what I need for my wedding. I feel like rehearsal dinners are just yeah. one of those things you toss in that like uh, people that plan weddings are just trying to get extra money out of. You it's, know? it's it's yeah, basically, I'm... it's just an excuse for people that think the wedding's all about them to like make speeches that they don't get to at the, at the official yeah. wedding. I was um... hoping so badly at that wedding too, that like someone would like propose to someone else. Cause you know, that's like a huge no, no at a wedding is you don't propose to someone else. <laughs> I was hoping that would set Cameron Diaz off too, like just to <laughs> unravel everything. <laughs> Um, oh, and, but, then, but... and then we get the dummy scene. God yeah. damn, dude. This scene is so good. <laughs> dude, like, Jeremy Piven is just accidentally killing everybody in this movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But man, he, that that one shot, he explodes. Like, it's so good. <laughs> and the, the, the funnier part to me is that he survives it. That was just so... I know I'm not supposed... I don't think I'm supposed to laugh at that, but god damn was yeah, it just, funny. For well, everyone so, that... So over the top. It may be, yeah. Um, if, if, you're wa- if you're listening to this and haven't watched this movie, stop. You need to... For I think you could probably sense. find that scene just on YouTube. But, like, <laughs> so... Jamie Piven's character, like... And... Uh, like Daniel Stern's character getting who are brothers let's keep that in mind yep Um, Mm -hmm. like getting this big argument like Daniel Stern's like calling him a murderer blah 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 like Michael starts to leave in his jeep and then decides 
I'm going to ram my Jeep into my brother's minivan that he loves <laughs> mm-hmm. to really show him. Daniel Stern and dies Daniel Stern, just to protect his minivan. <laughs> <laughs> and Daniel Stern leaps in front of his van like, no, don't. And Jeremy Piven <laughs> just fucking smashes him into the van like and there's it is... so much time for him to turn or slam on the brakes and he just does oh it. my <laughs> god it's an, it's absolutely insane and yeah watching it's worth it's worth watching the movie up to that point i think <laughs> like literally the moment that scene happened i paused it and typed out a note that said daniel stern is fucking dead <laughs> right i said the same thing i was like there's no way <laughs> he is a pink mist after that. Ugh. Yeah, and then, and then my, my my note my note immediately after was okay, maybe not. Yeah, and then oh, my, my note, my note at- says there is no way he survived that. <laughs> yeah, and then my third note was never mind. Yes, he is. Yeah. Well, yeah. my third note that is there are so many people in this operating room. <laughs> There's so many people in there. It's not um, even really an operating room. It just looks like they put him in the fucking hallway. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> um, again, I was talking about just how cruel this film is, and uh, it's like not enough to see Daniel Stern get smashed up. You then have to see like just the pain and the suffering in the hospital room, and his wife is like widowed now with these two horrible kids, and then even Christian Slater, like it, it's not. They're all crying. They're not having any fun but they, it's a very cruel funny line when he's like we got a friend in pieces in there <laughs> he's like yelling at the <laughs> yeah. at the cop <laughs> God, <Jesus. So> like, <laughs> um i will yeah. say i like one of my things like because after that like they like cut to the funeral and whatnot and i was like oh, okay like okay cool so they postponed the wedding because i was under the impression that rehearsal dinners were like the night before a wedding i thought so too so I was like, okay, the first reasonable thing anyone has done in this movie is postponing the wedding. Mm-hmm. But then literally like, the next scene is them arguing about whether to cancel it. And I was like, never mind. No <laughs> one's done anything reasonable. Oh, you, you know Cameron Diaz isn't going to let that wedding get postponed. No, absolutely not. Yeah, I'm not. Like, like, are you like, what? Their friend just got destroyed by mm-hmm. their other friend. And then Jeremy Piven at the funeral is pretty funny i gotta see say. i don't know i didn't i could i didn't think that was funny at all really i, like, I thought I, he was dude, doing some good physical comedy see i i thought they were trying they were trying really hard to make it funny but i don't know i couldn't i just, it did not come off as humorous to me i was like <laughs> this is fuck like there's a way to Weak. make a funny funeral like i mean the first one that comes yeah. to mind is like the funeral in old school mm-hmm. like yeah, that's just fucking, and wedding, that shit and is wedding, hilarious. Wedding, and wedding crashers. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. My God. But I was like, this <laughs> man, this uh, this era of comedy films really loved uh, doing stuff at weddings. Um, I like or the hell, tone I mean, look all at all over the place. Look at uh, the not the American remake, um, but the original Death at a Funeral. Like that movie's hilarious, mm-hmm. but. I don't know, dude. This this funeral scene did not make me... It made me cringe. I was like, <laughs> oh, this yeah. is not... Because the thing that makes a lot of stuff funny is reactions. Yeah. And yeah. so while Jeremy Piven's performance is kind of funny, mm-hmm. the rea- like no one's reaction is funny at all. And yeah. uh, ex- except I love, I love Cameron Diaz just sitting there like completely emotionless, like... With the in the black clothing, and she's just like, "Can we fucking get this over with?" Like, just the look. Oh, <laughs> uh, I mean, she she's just like, "This is taking attention away from my wedding." Like, yep. all this yeah. fuck off. <laughs> um, I don't remember the context. And then the... Go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go. Well, I was gonna say I don't remember the context of this note, but for some reason I just wrote down the words "dick bite." Did someone get bit in the dick? And I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, Mal, you just watched this movie, so you oh, have to remember. Oh yeah, this. that's all right. So that's jumping ahead. Is that when um, Christian Slater's fighting? That's Daniel yeah. That's Stern's when wife? he's fighting Lois. Yeah, Got yeah. yeah. She I also literally bites his dick. But what? I want to talk about the insurance and like will reading scene. Oh my god! Oh, yes. God. Again, you... that's another one that they're really trying to make funny, 
And I just was like, guys, this is not like this yeah. is not a comedy moment. This so, is awful. I think I have the question <laughs> that all of us probably have. Um, can you just say in your will that you leave your kids with somebody without them knowing? <laughs> oh, that is, if that's the case, right. Mally, that, if I die, no, 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 you're fucking not. You don't you fucking dare. I know. I know. Don't. don't they have parents? Don't they have grandparents? Yes, kids? or or uh, uncles yeah, right? or aunts, like I cousin. Don't, I don't think you could just say so and so has to take care of my kids. Because if so, the world would be a fucking nightmare. <laughs> Well, and I oh like it's, it's almost like it's like kind of mean in a way because it's like you can't like like you can't be John Favreau and Cameron Diaz. You can't be like no, like you don't want to be you don't want to be like known as the like the like oh yeah no dude like yeah those poor kids their mom and dad died and then you know their I guess their I guess parents are only friends her wouldn't only... raise them like yeah. it's like you don't want to be that guy. I guess that's her only really moral moment in the whole picture is that, yeah, she doesn't say no to that. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I, no, <laughs> no, I disagree. If, the, if my friend put in his will that if he dies, his kids have to go to me and he didn't warn me about that and didn't get my approval. No, I'm not. Yeah. Dude, that's yeah. a huge responsibility to just drop on somebody. And these kids I, are I, fucking animals. <laughs> these kids are yeah, monsters. I, 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 sh- I should reiterate it's 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 her only selfless moment in the in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> the yes, fact that she yeah, but, but but then she turns around and she's like, Oh, we're not postponing the wedding just because of this. I'm like, dude, yeah. he just like, <laughs> like that's this is this is around like this is the moment where I really really start hating Cameron Diaz's character. Mm-hmm. Because I'm just I like, mean, no, no, okay. I was like, you, you just no, became an unwilling need... mother to two children that are not yours. It's like, you <laughs> need <laughs> push pause on the wedding. At least a week. For a minute. Yeah. Like, dude, oh. okay. Like, two of my friends, like, were supposed to get married in a few months. And they literally were like, like, a month ago, we're like, you know what, we're gonna, we're, we're not gonna do the wedding because of, you know, all this COVID stuff, and, like, she's like, you know, your best friend was murdered by his brother, we just inherited two children, mm-hmm. uh, fuck yeah, we're still getting married tomorrow, you <laughs> asshole, like, I'm not gonna put, this is the day I've been waiting for, and then, and no, no money, they're getting no money, yeah, yeah they're, getting, they're getting 14 grand, <laughs> yeah. which isn't yeah. that's nothing, much. Dude. That's nothing for children, for sure. Um, I remember I, right when, um, before Christian Slater, when whenever him and John Favreau are talking to Daniel Stern's wife, and he's like m- miming that he's going to take a butcher knife to her, <laughs> I just wrote down the note. I was like, I think Christian Slater is not a good friend. To- no, he's an absolute <laughs> psychopath. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I don't, th- I, th- I don't think he's like, a good guy. He literally goes and kills Lois, and then tricks them into bringing Michael there, mm-hmm. and fucking like, conco- like k- shoots him, concocts this whole love triangle story. Yeah, right. and it's just like just killed off guys, screen. Very like, unceremoniously. Guys, which, Boyd is which, a psychopath. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Which again, we have to ass- we have to assume that the police again buy his bullshit story and don't investigate Boyd's story about how all these people are dead. Yep, like it's the worst police work I think I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> yeah, and like how like what well, ah I just the fuck mm-hmm. um and also like so after the whole will thing like John Favreau confesses to Laura. And she really ignores the whole my fiance and his friends committed multiple murders thing mm-hmm. because she doesn't want she wants the wedding to go well. It's yeah. Like, yeah. like, oh, we'll we'll handle this after the wedding. It's like, no, no <laughs> you should handle this now. And then like the day of the wedding, which I didn't even realize Boyd was supposed to be the fucking best man mm-hmm. this whole time. Mm-hmm. He starts showing up going on. It's like he starts going on about this insurance money. Yeah, like, so what is happening? Th- his whole plan he did all this for insurance money that's i feel like that got dropped in like out of nowhere like th- yeah that was his i whole... kind of agree like the whole like <laughs> him wanting the insurance money really comes out of nowhere wait, he wants 14 grand 
Well, that... I think I think he was under the impression he was going to get a lot the more. Full, like the well, because they said he had like the five hundred grand like insurance policy. Blah yeah. blah blah. Okay. Even so still, I, and... I think he was expecting you know a couple hundred grand. Yeah, and well, then well, wait, um... but he, he he didn't kill Daniel Stern though, right? So it's only once he knows about the insurance that, that he... he kills. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Oh yeah. God. And then yeah. when whenever um, John Favreau and who's the uh, the other guy that we haven't really talked about the guy with the uh, glasses Charles that's that's Leyland Orser right when then them two are talking about Boyd and uh, in the back room before the wedding it's again one of those instances where everyone is so loud in this movie when they should be talking quietly because they're talking about things that should be kept <laughs> in secret like there's this this movie I feel like they they expect people don't have like good hearing <laughs> nobody is able to keep secrets at all yeah well and then like so boyd starts freaking out fighting with john favreau and then laura cameron dia shows up and just starts beat like she's getting mm-hmm. in on the assault now mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and just beats the fuck out of boyd with a coat rack <laughs> and just like what like and she's just like this is my perfect day you're not gonna ruin it i was like you just beat a guy half to <laughs> death in your wedding dress like and she suggests killing the dog for some reason yeah the three-legged she's like, dog <laughs> yeah she's like oh my god oh and one thing so they realized during the ceremony that boyd had the rings as he's like crawling up the stairs and mm-hmm. my one note on that is like as de- crazy and detail-oriented as that bride is about the wedding, I find it very hard to believe that she forgot that the best man had the rings. Or that she and would yeah. let Boyd be the one to hold the rings. Right. It's like, in, in yeah, exactly. You're That's right. the whole thing yeah. in itself. But I was like, the way that scene should, like, the way that scene probably should have gone was she beats him half to death, opens his jacket, grabs the rings, like, let's go get fucking married. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then yeah afterwards after they're married everyone's happy she's like you need to tie up loose ends go kill your best friend also that dog's annoying kill that dude. yeah <laughs> just like wait I and mean- then john, john fravro fully plans to follow through with it he grabs charles like they, he drives him out to the desert the and like they start <laughs> they start digging a hole which also and then it shows them surrounded by suitcases and stuff again and i'm like wait when when and where did they dismember Boyd's body? And like did they do it in the goddamn church stairwell? Like, and why what? did they have to be still in their tuxes at this burial site? <laughs> He's not getting his deposit back on these tuxes. Yeah, I was like, guys, y'all you can change. You, you can change clothes. You know what would have been That's funnier? an option. That's an option. What would have been funnier for this movie is if Cameron Diaz was really kept in the dark the entire movie up until when Boyd dies and it would have been funny for her to have that turn of okay well you got to go kill him too and put him in the desert like that's when Jeff John Favreau like lays out exactly what happened that would have been a funny beat of her to like absorb yeah, that, all that, that information could have been funnier but yeah. her going into the wedding already knowing yeah. makes it really weird yeah um and uh, the, uh, although I, I just want to uh, I'm oh, sorry go ahead. Go, no go ahead go um, ahead I just want to talk really quickly about how this movie starts because I think that's kind of – it's pretty key where it starts. It starts oh, yeah, at, yeah. The, at the wedding with their knees jittering. And so we kind of know right away that this is a, this is a, this is a wedding anxiety movie. And then the, the first scene is him and his fiance like you know arguing and she's, she's really hammering into him and she says um, – like she she says from the get go, you need you need better friends. You need to change mm-hmm. your friends. Mm-hmm. And so it's this classic. It's playing on this classic male fear of like. And then there there are more scenes like that. Jeremy Piven's talking about how he's going to lose all his freedom when he gets married. Mm-hmm. And I think it's really playing on just there's like this male fear. Um, and I'm sure women fear it too. But it, the stereotype is men really fear like the, the, the I'm married gonna get, life. I'm gonna, yeah. yeah, I'm going to get married. I'm going to lose all my friends. I'm going to be like totally emasculated yeah. and it, I, kinda, I kind of yeah it, it's such <clears> a just, 90s like it this movie was made right when it needed to be made because it is such like a like you said yeah like marriage is like the the nail in the coffin of your life it's just so stupid yeah. <laughs> um that they have to overcompensate with 
the Vegas bachelor party and everything, which I mean, again, right, I think this right. movie, I think the idea is pretty good, but making it a comedy when it doesn't need to be. And then like making none of the characters likable is it's really hard to like say you enjoy this movie. <laughs> like There's, yeah. there's well, nothing on, to latch on. onto. So jump, we're going to jump in. Let's go ahead and cover the end now. Cause that's pretty much the only thing we haven't really talked about. Mm hmm. So oh, I, I just want, want one more quick note. The scene, right, go for it. The scene, the same scene you mentioned earlier, where Kristen Slater reaches for the knife. Mm -hmm. um, this is the scene where John, even John Favreau, loses like all morality because mm -hmm. I think he's sort of been meek. He's just really meek up yeah. to that point. Just everything anybody wants to do, he says yes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I feel like the movie kind of punishes him for that. Like, well, as crazy as Christian Slater is, like, at least he knows what he wants and, like, goes about it. And yeah. same with Cameron Diaz, whereas this guy just, tag, you know, does whatever everybody else wants. But he, he loses all um, – any sympathy you had from him is gone yeah. when he – he's – Jeremy Piven's about to tell the truth and then he goes, no, your, your husband slept with a whore. It's like – it's so horrible. Yeah. Right, and, right. Like, you're not even, you're going to, like, ruin her, like, you know, kind of sacred memory of her husband. Yeah. With this feel... lie. And then Slater doesn't even stop there. He's like, Ed, he, it wasn't the first time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, like, fucking really builds off that. I, I feel like yeah. this movie's, like, 60%, maybe 70% of the way there to being, like, a great all time classic. But man, yeah. just some of the choices they make. It's yeah. just, I don't know. So, um, so the ending. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he's sent out to the desert to bury Boyd's dismembered body and mm -hmm. supposedly kill the dog and also kill his friend Charles. Mm -hmm. Um, thankfully he doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. Although, like that seems really weird when it like it shows. Like Charles turns around, like just angry ass John Favreau holding the mm -hmm. shovel. I got it's a good, like, I got a good laugh out of that. This is weird. Well, and then that's the one. That's one of the things that did kind of make me chuckle when it just cuts away to them back in the car. Uh huh. I was like, okay. I was like, that's that's a classic little cut right there. Mm -hmm. And but what, then, is the, what is the song that's playing here? Did you notice this? I don't remember. The, uh. the lyrics are fried neck bones <laughs> and some home fries. Right before this car wreck. Ah, uh, lunch. I am hungry. Actually, damn it. I should have eaten a snack while we were recording this. Anyway. um, And then, like, I don't know if he does it on purpose or if he's just kind of, like, not focused. But John Favreau just drives straight into mm -hmm. another car. <laughs> Man. <And> Charles <laughs> goes flying through the their car windshield, through the air. Into the other mm -hmm. car's windshield. I gotta say, man, it looks great. <laughs> it's a good <laughs> it effect. It does. It looks good. <laughs> I will I, I say, gotta, my gotta... one note on that car crash scene was, I really hope they both died. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got. Let me let me ask you guys something because you're you're really good. You, you've both picked up on all these like flubs that I didn't notice, which is really cool. Um, do, do they have their seatbelts on? Mm. I, 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 I forgot. I would I would probably say uh, no, but I, mean, I, I, don't I don't think remember. I don't think I don't think Charles does or else well, clearly I'll be, oh my gone, God. Through, gone through the windshield. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I, I don't know. Say... I kind of I, I <laughs> that occurred to me, but like I was kind of like it cut so quickly into like almost like the epilogue that I kind of forgot to pause and rewind because I actually wanted to check that. I was like, ooh, like what? Like was Favreau wearing yeah. a seatbelt and he wasn't? That like, would that, make that's sense. an interesting yeah. little touch. Um, there's um, a line right here too. That I, <laughs> I don't remember who says it because it's been a while, but somebody says, I want a little black brother. <laughs> that's what? that's the friends. Yeah. yeah. That's Charles. <laughs> I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Did you not hear this line, Mally? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, it was, came in, it came out of nowhere, like right before the car wreck. But I, I was like, I, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I think, I think he's like, He's saying he wants to repent for everything they're doing by doing a really charitable thing. Oh, like a like and, a and, big brother program kind of thing. Yeah, and so okay. John Favreau's like okay, John Favreau's that like that makes so a little funny. more sense. Yeah. That line so by Fe itself is weird. So <laughs> and Favreau's let's... like, I can't, I can't kill you now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because he's like the... talking about going and joining Greenpeace. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's recap the final scene 
Um, oh, okay, boy. so <laughs> go for it, Mally. <laughs> Kyle, John Favreau has lost both of his legs from the knee down. Mm-hmm. Charles is seemingly brain damaged. He's got one of those, those like, like wheelchairs one, like, with the little hose that you blow into. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Cameron Diaz is like a really depressed housewife and they're having to also attempt to raise their dead French children. And once again, this movie tries to make all of that funny. Dude, there's a line right here I did laugh hysterically at. And it's one of Daniel Stern's kids. I can't remember which one. <laughs> <laughs> but, Wait, John, is it? Uh, go ahead. I think I know which line. John Favreau is like, try, I think, trying to play with one of them, and one of them says, "I hate you and your bitch wife." <laughs> oh no! See, that's not the. There is one line by one of the kids that make that made me laugh, and it's Cameron Diaz comes out and like it's when she's starting to freak out, like mm-hmm. watching like all this chaos, and one of the kids just shut up, looks at her, and she's he's like. That bathroom better be fucking spotless. <laughs> <laughs> it's it is a really bizarre ending. Well, and then like Cameron Diaz just starts making these noises like ah, 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 and like just has a full on like I thought fucking Daniel Stern is just like brain damaged like in this wheelchair oh not Daniel spinning. Stern um, um or sorry uh Leyland Orser yes. uh Charles is just like brain damaged spinning in circles in this motorized wheelchair John Favreau is crawling along the grass mm-hmm. trying With to no legs r- like rein in <laughs> these kids he's legless Cameron Diaz is just like in the backyard like having a nervous breakdown going ah, and like sprints into the street and just starts screaming i thought for sure she was, she was gonna, gonna get, get hit, by, hit by a car yes. yep 100 i thought for sure <laughs> yep, but i thought she was the way they filmed this final shot is kind of impressive because it's like you're in like this paint by numbers cul-de-sac like all these houses look the same and we just bird's eye view pull out from cameron diaz screaming like they do they're over the the credits like it just keeps going and going and going like it's a pretty mm-hmm. impressive shot for the 90s i gotta say but yeah, what a bizarre, weird fucking ending. <laughs> like it's, it's I mean, the, essentially everyone gets their comeuppance. <laughs> like everyone involved gets what's coming to them. But then you've got these two kids that didn't really do anything wrong other than being kids. Like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't what uh... happens in the scene after this final shot? <laughs> I don't don't know and i honestly i don't really want to know no. like i'm terrified to know what happens after this yeah um all right peter berg do not make a sequel to this <laughs> <laughs> even ve- more very bad things very bad things um before we get into the rest of the stuff like the prop cop and everything I've, i just want to have uh, a moment to say if there's anything else we wanted to talk about that we didn't cover like one thing i was curious about um is and, and no fault of his own but jeremy piven's hairline which i feel like is <laughs> kind of iconic what? in hollywood when it comes to to male hair loss i was just curious like what because in this movie he's he's got a decent amount of hair and i was wondering like when does it like start to fall because he's since had uh i think uh hair transplants but so I was just curious. I looked it up and I was like, you know, when did he get those transplants? <laughs> and there's some website. You look up the weirdest shit sometimes. <laughs> there's a website. I don't know the name of it, but it had a visual timeline of his hair throughout his filmography. And it was like tracking when he lost his hair. <laughs> it's very weird. <laughs> but I just thought that was pretty funny that there's a, a whole website dedicated to that. Um, Dude, again, yeah, because was... of some of the stuff you research for this show, mm-hmm. you are on so, oh, so many, many watch, lists. watch lists. Yeah, Jeremy Pivot's <laughs> coming from my kneecaps for sure. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, anything else that we uh, forgot to talk about? Um, ju- well, just a, a quick bit of trivia: a Christian Slater uh, was in prison um, for yeah, for like a, an incident in a in a hotel room. Oh, weirdly god. enough. Uh, I think it was. I of think it involved. Of course, he was. He seems like yeah. the type. 
and then I think he was he was like he got community service and was like so he was like making this movie while on parole. So oh, that's a that's, great movie to be making on parole. That's so yeah. so weird. And I think he co-produced it, so he he really helped get this well, made. You know, again, Peter Berg wasn't a he name. Gets top billing over John yeah. Favreau, who is the protagonist of this movie, or at least yeah. the main focal point. Um, the only bit of trivia I have is that Siskel and Ebert called this film one of the worst films of 1998. <laughs> oh yeah, they were. <laughs> they were not kind to this movie. Um, okay, well, okay, it's not. This isn't necessarily a bad movie no it is extremely reprehensible though yes it's, yeah that's very exactly that's what ebert said too. yeah yeah um, well why don't we get into prop cop which i feel okay. like is gonna be um, very strange for this movie <laughs> i mean there yeah there's not a lot of props um so prop cop for those who are uninitiated the prop cop is when uh Mally and i and our guest choose a prop from the movie that we would like to own for ourselves just like a little trinket we'd like to take sometimes that includes wardrobe and sometimes that includes set dressing but um i mean i get i'm gonna have to take the bone saw i guess (laughs) (laughs) it's the only thing i could think of a practical use for like i don't know man thanksgiving's uh, coming up i gotta carve a turkey (laughs) the only thing that i would have wanted it again i I feel bad even saying i would take this item but the corkscrew that christian slater uses to kill the security guard (laughs) i was like that'd that'd be kind of cool i guess yeah yeah (laughs) <laughs> I guess. Uh, Sam, what about you? Is there something from the movie that you would yeah, like to own? I'm not I'm not proud of my answer either, but okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to say that towel hook of uh, oh, because <laughs> oh, I no. have never I have never ever ever been to a hotel with a with a towel thingy like that. No, ever. yeah, not one that just sticks out <laughs> yeah, of the wall. Like I will a say <laughs> very odd yeah. bathroom. Yeah, yeah. very it's odd. Like bathroom. an octagon. Like it, it's yeah. very weird. Um, okay, well, <laughs> Mally, we have our work cut out for us, because what an ending, and, oh, yeah, I got one. Okay, well, we're gonna jump into the whole reason the show exists, the silver lining, for very bad things. What is your very good silver lining? They all got what they fucking deserved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, mine is pretty similar. Mine was just that Christian Slater can't harm anyone anymore because <laughs> he is done at the end of this movie. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think they're going to be friends with him anymore. Because he's mean, dead. He's dead. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> um, do Sam, you, the, you don't have do you to have one, but do you have a silver lining for the movie? I, I do. I had, can a silver lining be like what you think m- might happen after yeah. the movie ends? Yeah, yeah just... why not? Okay. We have no structure um, here and no real rules. Okay. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> um, well, if I remember from the uh, rehearsal dinner scene, um, John John Favreau's parents are alive and well. So if Laura like has the breakdown and ends up <laughs> in like Bellevue mm-hmm. and like can't can't like help these two mutilated guys anymore, I feel like the parents could uh, could step in and yeah, they they seem help. like they're from wealthier families. That yeah. makes sense. I would say too, and, uh, um, with the death of Daniel Stern and his wife, at least these kids uh, aren't in a foster home because these kids are fucking nightmares, and things could be a lot worse for them. That's true. Oh, and the dog, the dog had lived. Oh yeah, Yay. that's right. But, lo- but lo- lost, a lost that's a like leg. Lost the leg. Final. But- Still oh, there. God. <laughs> you know, you know, I don't do well with dogs dying in movies. Yeah. We yeah. learned that on yeah. the Blue Valentine episode. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do, do, do you www. guys think... www.doesthedogdie.com It's a very good resource. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this this movie showed up on, like, the PETA. PETA has, like, a thing about animal cruelty in movies. Oh, God, really? And they actually, really? They actually were, like... They, were, they actually had to write, like, no, a dog did not actually lose its leg in real life. Like, That's they swapped funny. dogs out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but, okay. Uh, do you think? Do you think if the movie ended with them just dying in the crash, that it would be 
really lame or uh, that's a tough one or better. Um, I think I would have been happier. Yeah, I, maybe. Yeah. I guess you'd have to get a follow up scene with Cameron Diaz, and I don't know what that would look like. I don't know. Mm. I mean, my thinking would be well, that I don't know because then she's raising those two kids by herself. Yeah, fuck. I don't. That might have been worse. But I feel like maybe she would have been like kind of okay with it because her whole thing isn't I want a good marriage. It's I want a good yeah. wedding. And she kind <laughs> of got the good wedding, as far as anyone else is concerned. So, yeah. I don't know. Fair point, fair point. I don't know. That'd be, I mean, the ending of this movie is going to be burned into my memory forever. So, I kind of <laughs> think they went with the right choice. Um, yeah. yeah, it's sort of like, what's what's the one thing that's like w- even worse than death? And they, they really went for it. Yeah. I don't feel good when this movie's over with, man. I know it's supposed to be a comedy, I'm supposed to be laughing, but... Woo. No. <laughs> it's a, All right. Well, it's let's a, let's get to a uh, pick me up movie alternatives, movies that people can double feature with very bad things if this movie doesn't uh like like I just said, it doesn't make you feel good at the end of it. Mally, what do you have? I mean, I got to go. I mentioned it earlier, but I mean, Swingers. Mm-hmm. But yes. but if you are really you want to fix that itch for some more crazy ass Christian Slater, mm-hmm. then you go with Heathers. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's what a good great choice. Movie. Um, oh, Heather's both is great movies. so good. Oh, yeah, both of those are fantastic. Yeah. yeah, I would say, we mentioned it earlier as well, I think you go into what this movie was definitely inspiration for, but you go with The Hangover, which is still, a, the first one's still a classic. So, yeah, you get to see kind of this movie done a little better <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Um, Sam, is there a movie that you can think of that people should watch after they watch very bad things? That's a little lighter, a little, uh, less serious, Uh, a little less severe. Yeah. So, so there's actually, uh, there's a movie called Bachelorette, um, with Kirsten Dunst and, uh, that movie. Oh dude, it's amazing. I know what movie you're talking about. That movie is amazing. Okay. It's so funny, and it's it is a little dark, and it, and it's about a bachelorette party, but it's there's there's no blood. It's all okay. Just kind of yeah, uh, a, Dustin, a little cr- a little cr- yeah. Did you ever see uh, Sleeping with Other People? I've recommended that movie you a thousand have, times. I haven't um, yet. Unfortunately. So it's the same writer and director as Bachelorette. Um, okay. She did Bachelorette first. Leslie uh, Headland. Dude, Bachelorette, I, I highly, I highly recommend. It's uh, Kirsten Dunst, Isla Fisher, Lizzie Kaplan, like James Marsden, Rebel Wilson, okay, um, Hayes MacArthur, uh, Ann Dowd, Adam Scott. It's awesome. Uh, okay. Lizzie Kaplan's like Lizzie Kaplan's character's so good in Bachelorette. Um, you probably know Leslie Headland from uh, what is it? Uh, Russian Doll, that Netflix show. Yeah, that's that's oh, where yeah. it sounds that, familiar from. That was that was that was her. That was her. Okay. Um. Yeah, dude, Sam. Good call, dude. I really <laughs> want right. to watch Bachelorette now. That's a good one. Well, lastly but yeah, not leastly, so uh, I have to ask the question: Do you recommend this movie, Mally? Since you're the most recent watchee, why don't you tell us? Do you think people should watch this movie? Ah, uh, man, I don't know. It's uh, it it would be really situational for me. Like I I couldn't recommend this movie to just anyone. Like I would, and. When I recommended it, or when and if I recommend it, I feel like it's gonna be like a, oh, you want to be, you want to see something really fucked up? Yeah. Check this out, like, cause shit. <laughs> yeah, I I say it's tough, man. I don't I don't think it's necessarily a good movie because there are a lot of problems with it, but it's almost like a seeing is believing kind of situation. So, I guess I guess with that, yes, I recommend it like at least once. Um, but what about what about you, Sam? What do you think? Do you do you think people should watch this movie if they haven't seen it before? Yeah, I'd I'd say absolutely not at a bachelor party. <laughs> <laughs> like a hundred percent. Sure. <laughs> Don't make the same mistake I did. Um, I would say yes, but only if like I would say I think it's a good movie to watch if you're in a really bad mood. <laughs> like mm. if you're if you've had a really horrible week and you kind of feel like laughs at the expense of other people okay it's like a nice nice like sadistic movie to put on i guess yeah yeah i can see that 
Uh, okay. Well, I think that pretty much wraps up uh, Very Bad Things from 1998, directed by Peter Berg. Sam, thank you for reaching out to us and bringing this movie to light, because I would have <laughs> never known about it otherwise. <laughs> yeah, I hope. Thanks so much for having me, and I hope. Yeah, I hope it mostly made your lives better. Uh, better? I don't know. <laughs> but definitely, this this was uh, ripe for the picking. You were dead on when you said we should cover it for the show, because, boy, it qualifies. Yo, um, cool. <laughs> that it did. So, uh, thank you for listening, everyone. If you haven't already, please subscribe wherever you're hearing this. Uh, leave us a rating and some feedback. We would greatly appreciate it. Uh, we drop new episodes every Monday, so be sure to check back next week for a new one. Uh, if you want to, you can follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram. Uh, and you can also hop over to our subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash Silver Linings Playlist for everything uh, about the show. Now, next week, Mally is your pick. So why don't you give us a clue for what movie we're going to be covering next week? Uh, next week, um, I'm going to drop a hint by giving a little piece of advice. Mm-hmm. And that is, don't trust a stranger in Scotland. Okay. This is going to be interesting because I haven't actually seen this movie yet. Um, so I'm curious curious to see what that's all about. So again, Sam, thank you for uh, being a guest on our show. This was great. Um, thank you so much Mally anything else you want to talk about before we go for the week I think that's it for me I gotta go sit and stare at a wall for a bit now (laughs) (laughs) all right well again thank you for listening everyone to the next week where we're talking about strangers and Scotland Uh, and until then as always Excelsior (laughs) (laughs) Excelsior Excelsior! 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 Look it up!